Hey everybody, it's Lissa and today I'm going to do a video on how to pierce your cartilage at home. I have not done it yet because um, I'm going ahead and doing this intro to the video because it's getting dark outside and I wanted good lighting for the intro. But yeah, I'm going to show you how to pierce your cartilage at home. And I'm just going to do a really big disclaimer before I start this video is that I'm not a professional. And I know that you're supposed to go to a professional to do this, but I know what I'm doing. I have all the right materials and everything for it. I know what I'm doing, so if you're going to comment below and say, don't do this at home, do a professional, some people are cheap like me and don't want to go and get it done, so I'm going to do it at home myself. So this is how to do it, and this is going to be kind of a long informational video because I don't see very many about cartilage piercings, which is actually called a helix piercing. So right here is your helix, and that's where I'm piercing it, So, but it's on the cartilage. So I'm just going to go ahead and end this intro and get on to the materials and everything you need. So I'm going to get started with the materials that you're going to need. So these, or this, might seem like a lot of materials, but um, it's if you want to be sanitized and you don't want to get an infection, then this is the best thing you need. So make sure you go ahead and tie your hair back away from your face. Um, I know I look awful with my hair up, but just... Take your hair out of your face. You don't want your hair getting in the way when you're trying to pierce your ear. You're going to need some rubbing alcohol, not to clean your ears, but to clean all of your earrings, needles, anything that you're gonna use near your ear. You're gonna need rubbing alcohol. You're going to need some cotton balls and some Q-tips. A flashlight, so I might be blinding you right now, but you're gonna need a flashlight and I'll show you why in a little bit. So um, I'm just using my phone, but if you just have a little flashlight that you can shine behind your ear, then use that. A pin to mark the spot that you're going to use, or a non-toxic marker. Some specific ear cleaner. So I bought this off Amazon. This is the H2 Ocean Sea Salt Spray, which everyone who has piercings talks about. So um, this is the 1.5 ounce bottle, so it's actually really tiny. I didn't expect it to be this small, but I'll put the link for it down below. But this is a sea salt spray. If you don't want to pay $10 for this little bottle, then you can also buy natural sea salt, non-iodized natural sea salt, and you can do salt soaks. If you want me to do a separate video on how to clean ear piercings, then just comment below and I'll do it. And I'll show you how to use this and stuff. But you can buy sea salt instead of buying the spray. And then there's another alternative, which is the Claire's Ear Care Solution, but I'm not going to use that for my cartilage because cartilage is a little more prone to infection than earlobes are. So I'm not going to use this for my cartilage. I'm just going to use the sea salt stuff to clean my ears. So make sure you don't clean your ears with hydrogen peroxide or rubbing alcohol. Use specific ear care cleaners because uh, if you use rubbing alcohol or hydrogen peroxide then you will dry out your piercing and it will get infected or dry or crusty and it just won't feel nice. You're also going to need a hollow piercing needle. So I'm not going to be using this needle to pierce my ear, I just opened this one to specifically show you what they look like. So do not use any type of needle. Use a hollow needle. And this is hair dye by the way, I did not like I don't know, draw on myself, but that's hair dye. But this is a hollow needle. It It's open at the front like this, and it's pointy. It's very pointy. I got this on Amazon as well. And as you can see, there's a little hole. So this is a 16 gauge needle. So for your cartilage, you're going to want a 16 gauge. But the thing is, is that I didn't do, I guess, enough research about the needles before I got them. So um, if it's easier for you buy 14 gauge needles for 16 gauge earrings so the earrings have a bigger hole to heal in. But lastly you're going to need a cartilage earring. So if you don't know what the difference between a cartilage earring is is that this is bigger than a regular earring. Do not use a regular earring for your cartilage. Use a specific 16 gauge earring. You can buy them on Amazon. They're really cheap and I'll put the links for these down below. But I think this is the one that I'm going to use. So it's this bow, barbell. So I recommend for your first earring that you have to keep in for a while to use a barbell. So if you don't know what that is, it's this little bar and it has a ball on the end that you screw off. Just like that. 
so you screw it off. So what I was talking about with the, and be careful not to lose the ball because this earring is actually a lot tinier than it looks like. It is really, really small. And what I was talking about is that the earring should go straight, I wish you could see, the earring should go straight into the needle, but it kind of just rests outside of it because it's the same size. So if you want it to be able to go inside the needle, then get a 14 gauge needle to pierce your ears instead of a 16 gauge. So also, just like that, if you're going to pierce your ears, or if you're going to have like 18 gauge earrings, then pierce your ear with 16 gauge needles. So always the size that's bigger, the one size bigger of the earring is what you're going to want to pierce your ears with if you want your ear to heal in a bigger hole. I'm just going to go ahead and use the 16 gauge hollow needle. So once again, that's what it looks like. And I'm sorry if you guys already know this, but I'm just helping out anyone who needs help. And if the packaging, if you buy these online and the packaging does not come like this and it's not sterilized in these little bags and if it doesn't say sterilized, then you need to throw them out because they're not legit, they're not sterilized and it should say the expiration date on it too. So it should come in like this and I just got mine in a 10 pack on Amazon for like $3 so they're not expensive. Just make sure you do use a piercing needle. I wanted to go ahead and show you the other earring or other barbell that I bought. And by the way, the reason why I recommend a barbell is because if you pierce with a hoop, it's possible that your ear will heal in a round way so you can't wear barbells after it heals. So I just recommend getting it pierced with a barbell and not a hoop. And yeah, so this is the other one that I bought. It's a really tiny stud and I got it on Amazon as well. And it's just a barbell with the ball back like that. And the stud does not screw off, just the ball does. So I was debating on whether doing the stud, it's actually really small, like it doesn't look small on camera, but it really is, or the bow, but I, I don't know, since I have to keep this in my ear for a while, I think I'm gonna do the bow. So yeah, and then you're going to just need little cups to sterilize your stuff in, little sterilization cups that you can throw out, and then some tissues to keep your stuff held in. So the first thing I'm gonna go ahead and tell you to do is to take your rubbing alcohol and pour it in one of these little cups. So this one shoots out. But... Okay, so pour it in one of these little cups so it's filled. And then you're going to put the earrings that you're going to put in your ear into the cup. So here's the bow. And here's the stud. I don't know which I'm going to use yet, so I'm putting them both in there. So they're in there. You probably can't see because they're all the way at the bottom. But they're in there. And then you can also put your needle in there. But since my needle is already in this sterilized sorry it wasn't in the, in the view but since my needles are already in these sterilized little packages all I'm gonna do is wipe it with rubbing alcohol before I use it I'm not gonna soak it so soak these for a good like 10 20 minutes and while you're waiting you can just go ahead and mark your ear and clean it and get ready and by the way the first thing that you're supposed to do before you touch any of this is wash your hands I forgot to tell you guys that but wash your hands with warm water and some soap. So yeah, this is just soft soap brand hand soap. And you're literally gonna wash your hands like after everything because you just wanna be as sterile as you can. Or you could wear sterilization gloves. That's a good idea as well. I just never bought any. But yeah, wash your hands with warm soap and water. <laughs> After you wash your hands, you're going to take your H2 Ocean or whatever you're going to use to clean your ears and you're just going to spray it on the cotton ball. And you're going to clean where you're going to pierce. Really good. So if it's like in this little ear part right here, you're going to clean all in it. The lighting is horrible in my bathroom and I look really pale and I swear I'm not. <laughs> so, 
Just going to make sure it's as clean as possible. Just like that. Alright, so I bet you guys have been wondering the whole time why I asked you to get a flashlight. Well, there is veins that are in your cartilage and you can see them when you put a flashlight behind your ear, which my camera won't focus into that because it doesn't focus that well. But you're, if you put the flashlight behind your ear, and I'm looking at a mirror like right next to the camera, so that's why I'm looking over here. But if you put the flashlight right behind your ear, you will see all the veins that are in there. And the place that I originally wanted to pierce my cartilage, which was right here, I have a huge vein, like the beginning of my ear vein or whatever, it starts right there. And I'm not going to jab right through that because I'll start bleeding. So what you're going to do is you're going to mark a spot where the vein is either really, really, really small or there's no vein at all, at least that you can see. So go ahead and put the flashlight behind your ear and take your pen and mark the little spot where you don't see any veins. And if you want to bleed and you want to put it right through a vein, go ahead. But I'm just showing you the way if you're going to freak out and you don't want to bleed, you probably still will bleed. But this is a this will give you a better chance as to not bleed. So put so I went ahead and did that and I I think I'm avoiding all of the veins and um, if you're doing it in both ears, if you're doing a cartilage in both ears, then just make sure you check with this thing too. So that is where I'm going to pierce with that little black dot right there. So I guess that's not really like too high up. Like I don't want like a really high cartilage. So I guess that's like an, a normal helix piercing but I wanted it a little bit more up, but there's a huge vein right there. And you're also going to need something to put behind your ear if you like that. I think I'm just going to do soap like I did in my last ear piercing video. So just a bar of soap or something like that. A cork, apple. I don't recommend apple actually because that's like dirty and gross. Also, I do not recommend using a numbing thingy, numbing gel, because there's three layers of skin in your cartilage, so you're going to have to go through the first layer, the center layer, and the last layer. And if you use a numbing gel, it's only going to numb the first layer of your skin. So just because you won't be able to feel the first layer, you're going to be able to feel the second layer. So if you do the piercing fast enough, it shouldn't be that bad. Um, honestly, I've never done it before. Like, this is the first time I'm doing it, but I'm doing it on video so you guys can experience it with me. I don't use Vaseline as a lubricant for your ear piercing needle. Use Neosporin if you're going to use anything that will help go through your ear quicker because Neosporin is a gooey like texture like if you don't know what Neosporin is. You obviously never got a cut as a child <laughs> but yeah it's um, first aid anti antibiotic antibiotic oh, I can't say that word but it's ointment. So when it does go through your ear, it's going to help heal it anyway, so it's not going to get infected because this stuff is for cuts and sores and bruises and this is what it's for. Alright, so I'm just going to put some of this Neosporin on my wrist before I take out the needle because the moment the needle hits the air, it's not going to be sterile anymore. So you just want to do it as quickly as possible. Once again, I'm going to clean my ear. Okay. So, I'm going to go ahead and take the needle out. So the main thing you're going to want to do while you're piercing your ear is to focus on your breathing. Because if you hold your breath, you're going to pass out. Honestly. And I know it's kind of scary because, you know, like you're sticking a needle through your ear. But, that's what you get for doing this on your own. So this is a sterile needle. My hands, I just washed them again. And this end is really pointy. Like it breaks the skin on my finger when I touch it. So and make sure your earring is unrolled so you can quickly fix it. So I'm just going to go ahead and put my needle in the Neosporin. I don't know how much to do, so I'm just putting a tad bit. 
Okay, I'm actually really nervous to do this. I'm not even gonna lie to you right now. So I have the soap and I'm going to fast forward this because um, I don't want y'all hearing like the cartilage popping and stuff like that's just really gross. So I'm going to fast forward this so y'all can see me doing it but not like hear it, if you know what I mean. transfer the earring into put the earring into the needle and pull as you guys can see it is in my ear and there is blood everywhere. <laughs> I have not screwed the ball on, but it is all the way through. Okay, so it really didn't hurt. Like, it hurt just like, sorry, I'm not even in the camera. It hurt just kind of like an earlobe to me, except um, you could hear popping. So that's really gross, but I'm gonna go ahead and cool this down and clean it because it, it kind of burns a little bit. So I totally understand why people mean to use a bigger needle because it's a lot easier to get the piercing in because it took me a while to get the earring in the needle. Clean all the blood off my other piercings. So I'm just going to go ahead and clean my ear real quick. I'm not doing it on the other ear, I'm just having this one, so that's it. But. I'm just going to clean this really fast and then I'll get back to you and I just wanted to show you the scary truth if you're piercing your ears at home. It could bleed. I didn't even hit a vein and this is how much blood just like started gushing and you could probably see in the video where I started like freaking out because I don't like blood. But I mean it really didn't hurt like it's fine now. It really doesn't even hurt now and it's really weird because my lobes hurt worse. Alright guys, so this is how it looks. I went ahead and turned it sideways so it had more room to um, heal and stuff. Or like to, um, if it swells up, it'll have more room because it's the side of the bow is being pushed by like the tip of my ear or whatever. So this is what the back looks like. It's just a barbell. So um, make sure with the needle that you, here I'll tilt this up a little bit. Make sure with the needle that you wrap it up really good, put it in a sterile container when you throw it out. Because you don't want the garbage men or whoever's taking out your garbage to prick themselves. Okay, I'm running out of memory on my phone, so the last thing I'm going to tell you is to... I'm going to soak my ear with a sea salt soak. Uh, you can search it in Google or whatever and try to find it, or ask me to do another video and I will. But I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Um, if you have any questions about this, then please comment down below, message me, email me, I'll answer you. And um, I'll see you guys in my next video.